Hi, my name's Bob Grinier, and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Okay, so welcome to Same, Same, But Different. Straight into it, I guess you can probably work out that these are not the same thing. This is a coal rabbi, and this is a sweet pepper, or paprika, as you might call it in different countries. And uh, yes, they are beautiful vegetables. Uh, some people would argue this has got seeds on the inside, so it's maybe a fruit. Um, but, uh, you know, you would argue that they are both edible, so they're the same in that respect, but, they're, and they're both food, I guess, and, but they're um, different. Okay, so how about these two? Well, they're both coal rabbi, and they look really, really similar. So you've got a little branch out here, you have a, a kind of core thing here, and then one there, and then one over there, and then one over here, and one over here. It's, it's like very, very similar. These are definitely same, same, but different. They obviously come from the same design or desire to be in a certain shape. Um, but owing to different nutrition, different light, different soil conditions or whatever, just given the same design, they turn out slightly differently. And if we look at these two, we would argue that these are same, same, but different. We wouldn't say that this is not a sweet pepper and this is or vice versa. They're both definitely sweet peppers, but the, the level of uh, sort of difference between them is, is much larger uh, than the coal rabbi. Um, you know, there's a difference in colour um, and there is a difference in, you know, shape. Uh, but overall, you can see that they are, they're in the same family. You know, there might be brothers or there might be cousins or whatever, but they, they are definitely in the same family. So what I'm trying to get across here is that um, even within things that have the same basic genetic structure or desire to grow in a certain way, they can be quite different. Now, imagine if you were growing this in a box, uh, it wouldn't end up necessarily this shape. And in fact, with melons, they do grow things, melons in boxes so that they end up square, so they're easy to package. So if you really constrain or change the environment at which the design is trying to grow, it will try and do its best to grow in that environment. And in that respect, why, why am I going on about this? Well, uh, I'm going on about this because uh, we've been discussing over the last couple of videos how features on, for instance, the lion reactor here, line one and uh, um, inside of the quartz of the reactor, and line three, uh, an X-ray that was exposed to a cold reactor, um, they had similar structures uh, to the uh, solar flare, but specifically to the magnetic flux coming from a solar flare. And also this is the, uh, a different part of line two. Uh, and so um, it's not identical, but the amount of similarity would suggest that whatever's going on on this scale is going on on this scale. And we're saying these are highly magnetic structures. Exotic vacuum objects are highly magnetic structures. They can cluster. And, you know, you can get magnets and you can pile them up and it's just a bigger magnet. And in fact, the Earth has a magnetic field. It's like a big magnet. And the Sun has a big magnetic field. It's just a big magnet. So if magnets can scale and have the same kind of overall... Uh, intent uh, uh, as they do on a much smaller level even if you chop a magnet in, in half you know it's it's kind of the same attributes uh, and it would still want to cluster and group together in the same way why can't exotic vacuum objects why why are you limiting what they can do and so um, uh, this this is again I would say same same but different lions and the sun and in this case uh, with the Hutchison effect and the sun um, this one we had to flip, okay, we didn't have to flip this for it to line up, but we did have to flip this, and you are going to see this with other uh, experimental data that I show you, um, uh, but you, you will see the same patterns occurring, but they might be flipped. Now, why might that be? Well, if we take the sunspots on the sun, they generally occur at this point and this point in the sun, and you've got the equator. Well, if you imagine this is a big magnet, 
uh, what's actually happening is you've got a north and a south pole. And so things on one side of the equator um, would probably be a mirror image of the other. So if there's something that's a, a mirror image here on um, the Hutchison effect, but perhaps this was this was done in Canada, and this was done in the these were done in the UK. They're both in the northern hemisphere. Maybe this sunspot was actually taken in the southern hemisphere of the sun, and so it was a mirror image. And perhaps um, uh, also. Uh, the magnetic fields that John had uh, used, and, and sometimes he did actually use large neodymium ND52 magnets to shape fields. Perhaps he reoriented the field so that it, it flipped the the um, the way the uh, exotic vacuum objects were clustering. And in the case of this, in the line reactor, it actually had a, a solenoid that the reactor was put into. And, and perhaps in that case, uh, the solenoid produced a magnetic field that was in line, even though it was in the northern hemisphere. You know, Or maybe this was in the northern hemisphere of the sun, uh, and so it uh, lined up with what you're seeing in the line reactor. And so... Um, I, about 30 years ago, I travelled to Lake Nakuru in Kenya, very, very lucky. And on the way there, uh, from the capital Nairobi, at the equator, um, this guy, we stopped by the side of the road, and this guy uh, used a bucket, uh, the same bucket, uh, a matchstick, and some water. And he showed me that water on the uh, northern hemisphere goes down one way, and on the southern hemisphere it goes down the other. Uh, and... Uh, and right at the equator, um, it basically just goes straight down the hole. And so what I've done here is I've shown, uh, I've given a link here to someone uh, uh, doing exactly this experiment uh, to some uh, onlookers uh, on the equator in Uganda. And uh, so you can click on that and go and have a look at it. But essentially, they're, they're using a little flower here, which is absolutely beautiful. And it goes down one way on one side of the equator. On the southern side, it goes down the other way. And then on the actual zero degrees latitude, it actually just gets it just goes straight down the hole and there's no spinning. Uh, and apparently, the effect is much greater at the equator. And uh, there's an experiment here where people are doing, uh, trying to replicate the same effect very methodically. Um, but they're much further from the equator and the effect isn't so strong. So this does support this notion that apparently the effect is strongest at the equator. So this would confirm that a magnetic large body, if you were conducting experiments on one side of, uh, of the Earth, uh, one uh, on the northern hemisphere, you would get your uh, structures like this uh, in the opposite orientation if you didn't potentially have any strong magnetic or, or, or electromagnetic fields in play at the time. Anyway, then I want to refer to another thing that uh, in, in the work uh, um, by Edward Lidskalnim um, called Magnetic Current, and I've given a link to that there. In fact, all the links uh, will be in this presentation, which you can download from the description of the video. And he says, now take a three foot long soft steel welding rod, already magnetized as a permanent magnet. Hang it in a fine thread so it is in a level. Now measure each end and you will see that the south end is longer. In my location at Rockgate between 25th and 26th latitude and 80th and 81st long longitude west, in three foot long magnet, the south pole at end is about 16th of an inch longer. Farther north, it should be longer yet, but at the equator, both ends of the magnet should be equal in length. In Earth's south hemisphere, the north pole uh, end of the magnet should be longer. So this is this is pretty much similar to growing a vegetable in a box, you know, or changing the environment, it, or slightly adjusting the environment in which your coal rabbi is growing. Um, so these, these two effects, which are both magnetic in nature, and we have the magnetic field on the sun, and we have the magnetic and electromagnetic fields in these reactors, will give a different outcome. And over the course of the coming weeks, you're going to see some structures that are different in this respect uh, due to uh, the flipping uh, compared to sunspots. But you're also going to see um, uh, the same structures, the exact same structures, but uh, where they're um, made of carbon and silicon dioxide or they're made of tungsten or they're made of uh, uh, all kinds of different materials. 
And it's the same with the, the Evo strikes. So, for instance, they, they, they give a different uh, I I impression on, on PTFE or aluminium or, or uh, silicon dioxide. So, th because there's different availability of electrons, the, the melting point or, or the bond strength of the electrons in the metal lattice, for instance, or, or, or the covalent bonds, they're, they're stronger. So, they, they, the impression that the exotic vacuum object does or the damage that it does is different but you can see commonalities you can see this same same but different this same same but different going on so um that's that's the point that i wanted to make in this video um, but just to give you some uh, a bonus here, I just wanted to talk about the high energy photons in Lena with respect to the sun and what we've been talking about with the um, observations of uh, the uh, uh, structures in um, sunspots and the magnetic parts of those structures uh, with either Lena or John Hutchison effects. Essentially, Francesco Piantelli, he got a burn on his arm via the glass pass-through window when he started up his nickel hydrogen reactor once. It was just sort of on his right uh, shoulder. Uh, quite a nasty burn, and it was only a momentary thing, so there must have been an intense flash of uh, uh, radiation sufficient, uh, of sufficient energy in order to do the burn. Um, Peter Grenot, and I've given links here to these uh, various people, Peter Grenot uh, did water explosion and, and saw a lot of UV uh, and excess energy. Uh, sonar fusion, obviously a lot of uh, UV light it would apparently, apparently going on there. And other researchers uh, uh, that are claiming not to be doing cold fusion uh, see large amounts of UV output. Uh, Ken Shoulders said that explosively destructing EVOs can produce high energy electrons that then can uh, produce uh, high energy photons. And Preparata and Fleischmann observed soft X rays. So, um, you know, there's a range of people observing high energy photons coming from Lena and other people that are claiming not to be doing Lena, but also observing high energy uh, uh, photons. And I just want to show you this uh, because I think it's interesting. Here we have our sun that we showed you earlier, and I've given you the source there. And both of these images are from July the 19th, uh, 2000. And here we have the sunspots. And uh, in the previous video, I talked about the proton flaring from sunspots. But I just want to show you the UV image taken at the same time for this July 19th, 2000 image of that sun. And I have it here as a little animation. Now, do you notice anything? Hmm, curious. There's sunspots here, and look, there's a bright amount of UV. There's sunspots over here, and there's a lot of UV. There's sunspots here, and there's a lot of UV. There's sunspots over here, and there's a lot of UV. And there's a sunspot down here, and there's a lot of UV. And there's a sunspot over here, and there's a lot of UV. Hmm, curious. So I am saying that the surface of the sun is encapsulated in a array of structures formed from exotic vacuum objects, okay, which are highly magnetic structures. And that the sunspots themselves are even more intensely magnetic uh, structures also made from exotic vacuum objects and that the suggestion is that you get one output when it's at a sort of stable level but when you push it to here something else is going on and it would appear that you get protons and you get UV. Hmm, are we looking at the mechanism of Lena? Are we? I don't know. Thank you very much for your time and I'll see you in the next video.